Thank you so much, Jamie, and, and thank you all for being here. It's really a, a great pleasure um, to be here and seeing so many people that I know so well who over the years have made such great contributions to global health. I obviously want to thank the Global Health Technologies Coalition for this, for this recognition, this award. It's, it's really much, much appreciated. And also my thanks to the coalition and the Innovating for Impact and its chairperson, Rebecca Martin, uh, for this uh, wonderful honor. Uh, also, I, I know we're, we're honoring uh, Senators um, Sherrod Brown and Todd Young this evening, and I, I hope I get a chance to see them, but if I don't, um, I just want to congratulate them and thank them for the years of support that they've given to us at the NIH, because at least from a scientific standpoint, from my perspective, a lot of the things that we've been able to do, we really could not do without the very, very strong and enduring and consistent support that we get from the Congress through multiple administrations. And one of the really great things about what we do, all of us in this room, is that for the most part, it gets bipartisan support. And that's something, you know, living in the world of divisiveness that we are living in right now, uh, it really warms my heart to see if there's one element where people can still agree upon is what we all do with our lives. Well, except for me in certain <laughs> conditions. <laughs> but we will go into that tonight. This is, um, but um, I, I want to congratulate, the, you know, the, the thing about, that I like about this evening is that it's about coalition. And I, I want to thank the members of this coalition, you know, the TB Alliance, the NIH, the USAID colleagues. But I went through the list in, that my staff gave me that the coalition is like, I, I could spend maybe the next 20 minutes talking about all of the people who are involved in the coalition, which is really terrific. That really tells you something about that. I also want to thank the people in the audience, because looking around the audience and just scanning other people, I see so many people who have really devoted their entire careers to the things that are so important to us, is the science and the public health to make sure that the interventions, such as the one of the interventions that we're celebrating tonight, the extraordinary achievement of getting that combination of anti-tuberculous drugs, um, you know, we have Pertamidid, which we're celebrating tonight together with Bedaquilin and Linezolid, which has really transformed uh, a field that has been, and I've spoken about this for decades, a field that has really been sleepy in the sense of not having the advances that we've had with other areas that were now essentially skyrocketing it into the 21st century. We have not only the therapies that we're celebrating tonight, but we also have some promising uh, vaccines for tuberculosis. But tuberculosis isn't the only disease that we're dealing with. And again, it gets back to the concept that I very feel very strongly about is the coalition of fundamental basic science, public health organizations, pharmaceutical companies, and foundations. Uh, TB kills 1.6 million people a year the last of that count was in 2021, and that's a lot of people to die. 50 million people die of infectious diseases each year. And if you look at that, a lot of the things that I've had to deal with in my, you know, now almost 40 year career as the director of NIAID has been emerging and re-emerging infections. I mean, it could be H5N1, H7N9, Ebola, Zika, pandemic flu, but what we're experiencing now with COVID, I think, is another really good example of how important it is for groups getting together in a coalition-type fashion. And I'm talking about what was accomplished in an extraordinary manner with the development of vaccines for COVID-19. I mean, you're, this could not have been done by any individual component of the, of the coalitions. We had the investment in fundamental basic and clinical research that the NIH and other organizations have been doing for decades, which led to the platform technology of mRNA. We had the structure-based vaccine design that actually originated in the unsuccessful attempt thus far to develop a vaccine for HIV, where we use structure-based vaccine design 
to really delineate the conformation of the right immunogen. And that approach was used successfully to develop the mutationally stabilized spike protein in its prefusion form. And in its prefusion form, it became an extraordinary immunogen. And then what happened with that? We did something that has never, ever been done before, in that from the time the virus was recognized in January of 2020, over a period of 11 months, we had a tens of thousands of clinical trial participants. The vi vaccine was proven to be highly effective and safe, and it went into the arms of individuals by the end of November, the beginning of December. That is galactospherically better <laughs> than we ever could have done before, which something like that would have taken about anywhere from seven to 12 years. And it was done because of the things we're talking about tonight. And that is the fact that we have people from so many different uh, avenues of, of, of endeavor. Uh, pharmaceutical companies, and I give a great deal of credit to them partnering with the fundamental basic and clinical researchers and foundations. So it's something that I really feel, really feel good about celebrating with you. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And we have a lot more work to do. As you know, I'm stepping down from my position in the US government, but I'm not stepping down for what we do and we've devoted our lives to. So for those of you who want to get rid of me, it's not going to happen. I'm going to be around. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate it.